How you doing, sir? Good, thank you. Uh, what's your name, buddy? Bob Desensi. And what's your connection to racing? Right now, I'm a gap attendant at Churchill Downs. I work the front side for Kelly Danner whenever she needs help over here. And how long you been involved, man? How long you worked at Churchill? I've worked here since 1966. Wow, 1966, <laughs> huh? And you know, oh man, what was racing like back in 1966? Completely different than it is now. Yeah. One of the things that's interesting, when I first came around here, women weren't allowed on the racetrack after six o'clock. If you brought your girlfriend or your wife back then, stayed at the guard shack after six o'clock till you got done with your work and then you could pick them back up. They weren't allowed back here. And you know, what were some of the jobs you had throughout the years? I started out as a hot walker, then became a groom, then was an assistant, then was a foreman. Then I got the good job as assistant trainer for two. Um, well, Harry Trotsky's in the Hall of Fame. I worked for him. I worked for the guy that got killed at Keeneland, Del Carroll. He was a top trainer, would have been in the Hall of Trade, but he got killed on a horse at Keeneland. Those were two excellent horsemen that gave me a good background. So when I started out training, I had some confidence in myself, you know, from working for them. And you know, what's some of the um, good horses you rubbed, man? Well, I rubbed a horse called Hasty Flyer. Came in, was gonna be one of the favorites for the Derby. And he hurt a leg. I rubbed a really good, really good horse, an old horse, won about 49 races. Horse called Navy Admiral just some old time class horses. I never was in the big time with horses, but when I was with Del Carroll, we won the Preakness with BBB, I think 72. And uh, we won the Diplomat, we won a lot of stakes. Del had a lot of stake horses. And you know, throughout the years, right, what's your favorite moment? Well, I won the Stephen Foster here with a horse called, uh, I, matter of fact, I bought the horse for $12,000 and I won the Stephen Foster with him. And then I won the Louisville Handicap here with another horse and got disqualified. But Tenants Harbor won the, won the Stephen Foster. And a horse called 2.2 mil won the, won the Louisville Handicap. And then I got this, I had a filly called My Little Firefly. And I won about seven stakes races with her at the little racetracks. River Downs, Beulah Park, Ellis Park, Turfway Park, places like that. And you know, what's so special about Churchill Downs? I tell you, for me, is because I grew up in Louisville, and when I was a little kid, you know, my dad and my grandfather, church racing was the only game in town. So we grew up learning about horses when we were kids. When I was a kid, there were still horse-drawn carriages. You know, the bread man still delivered bread with a horse-drawn carriage. So we got to fool with horses when we were kids, and we just fell in love with horses. Anybody gets around horses, pretty much falls in love with them. There's no jobs back here. You know, it's all the way of life. Yeah. You can't come back here and think you're going to work seven days a week, cold, hot, whatever, and not love what you're doing. Yeah. And you know, right, who were, the, who were the best grooms, man, in your opinion, man? Who were the best grooms, in your opinion, back in the days? Sweat was the best groom of any of them. Sweat, the rub secretariat, he was a top groom. Now, there were some other guys back then. The thing, the difference in those grooms, they never left the barn. Those horses were their life. You know, they lived with their horses. And Sweat was as good. He not only rubbed, he rubbed Honest Pleasure and Secretariat both. He rode, he ran, you know, he rubbed two champions. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Sweat, he was, he was tops. Um, some of the grooms around here, we had an old, well, John could tell you all those old guys, Catfish, I don't even remember Catfish's name. Catfish rubbed the hair off the horse. But they loved it. You know, if, if, you're, if they walk down the shed and your horse looked better than theirs, they got pissed off. They want to go back and work on their horse more and make him look better than yours. They took a lot of pride in what they did. And you know, what make a good groom, man, in your opinion? Loving the horse. Loving the horse. If you like what he's doing and you give him the eye and you see what he thinks and he thinks of you, it makes you want to take care of him. And you know, the name of my program, right, is the real players inside the backstretch, right? Guys like Eddie Sweat, guys like you that have been here a long time. How important is the guys that work on the backside, man, to make all this thing happen, man? If you didn't have them, you wouldn't have racing. Half of these trainers wouldn't know how to rub a horse. You know, they don't have to take care of a horse. The old time group were different. We worked on horses. You know, we didn't have all these vets and medications and everything. We stood them in ice, we hosed them, we rubbed their legs down, we grazed them in the afternoons. We didn't cut, there wasn't no 10 o'clock feed and leave. We stayed around the barn until we got done 
what that horse needed done to him. But not me, that's with all the grooms. I learned from the best grooms there was. I wanted to be a good groom. I was a school teacher. And I wanted to, I wanted to learn how those guys did it. And I'd watch them till I learned what they were doing. And you know, who was your mentor, man? I think the best, well, probably, I learned as much from, from Eddie, from uh, John Robertson as I learned from anybody. He's a top, he was a top groom too. Yeah. And a good guy, good guy. Bad gambler, good horseman. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, man, and that's the, that's the purpose of this program, man, is kind of, to kind of shed light on these guys, man, that nobody really talk about. Well, you won't find any better. If you could find, you read that book, you get that book, they got it for sale over there, the, and you can see some of those guys that are in there, and they'll give you an idea that the new ones are mostly Hispanic. They're completely different. When I came around, it was all black and white. There were two kinds of people on the racetrack, people that loved it to be here and the people that had to be here. Mm. If that people that had to be here, if they weren't for the racetrack, they'd been living under a bridge someplace mm. or in jail yeah. because they couldn't function because somebody told them everything to do. And once they learned to do it and they fell in love with what they were doing, then they were functional. You know, then they made a living, they were happy. But there were grooms in New York. I, I ever met a groom when I was in New York, had been on the racetrack 32 years and had never left the backside of the racetrack. Wow. Never left, huh? I uh, never had been off the backside of the race. 32 years. Yeah. Wow. And that's 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 that, that's heavy right there. Yeah, huh? they wouldn't leave. And we had a when I was with Harry Trotchick, we had a boy named Jim. Always there wasn't no boys, no man. He'd had somebody go to the grove. He'd never leave that tack room or that barn. Never would leave it. The only time he left was when we shipped to another racetrack. Yeah. You and couldn't get him to go out to dinner or go out to any place to shop. If he'd give you some money to buy him some clothes or something. That was it. And bring it back, huh? Yeah. And me actually, man, how old are you, man? 78. 78, right? And why do you still wake up every day and come to the racetrack? I sleep in there. I don't get up till 4. Yeah, but why? <laughs> but, but for you, why? Why still? I just love the, I love being around the horses. You know, horses are like magnets. They draw you to them. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of funny that you... Now I'm a gap attendant, I get to see all the horses, get to see a lot of new trainers, a lot of new ways of training, like the way they changed the Japanese horse coming up to here. I've never seen training like that before. In all the years I've been here, I've never seen a horse train like that. I'd seen interval training when they tried that and it didn't work, so. But I just love, actually love being around horses. You know, it's a, it's a thrill to me to see one, when you can get a horse and Maybe he wasn't any count, or maybe somebody gave up on him. You went a race with him. You took a lot of pride in that, you know, yeah. to know you could work like that. You got a lot of disappointments. There's a lot of highs and a lot of lows. A lot more lows than there are highs. That's what they say. But you live for the highs. That's what they say, <laughs> man. And you know, it, it was an honor, man, talking to you, man. You made my day today, man. Well, I hope you do good. I, hope, I love to see people write about the people on the backside. And you know, that's what it's about, man. We travel. I traveled all the way from New York to come yeah. and interview these guys back here, and you know, thank you. Yes, sir. You take care.